so so this 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 is a fundamental point on which I think many of us had questions. That being the case, could you give us a little more detail on how the rationing mechanism works, how the triage system works, beyond the fact that the rich will always have more connections and more ability to achieve services. How does that, I guess the answer is that it plays out differently in different states, in different localities, in different places, or can you say a little bit more what those problems are and what potential solutions are being discussed to deal with them beyond more resources? I'll give you a good example. Um, to answer this question uh, is what ha what's happening in Rio de Janeiro. In the, in the high complexity care of uh, the secondary and tertiary care, in most places of Brazil, uh, you get there, if you, if you get better care, you get first care if you have you know, ways of going around the system, around the lines. In Rio de Janeiro, there's a, there's a pioneering experience which has probably, will probably become a model for the country if we keep on investing on, on the positive system. On the, it, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing uh, progress uh, and surprisingly coming from the state, from the city, it's uh, in my city, coming from a city which has a very political group, you know, not 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 good at all on uh, on on uh, on this on the political spectrum. The right wing, they're conservative, they're corrupt, but they hired interesting people, management people, for uh, for the the secretary of health. And what they what they are doing is that they created a system, what they call regulation. Regulation of the of the Rio de Janeiro city health system starts on the family doctor. So everything you can you, you can get from a medical consultation has to be started on. It's a little bit like um, UK. It has to start on the on the family health doctor, which works basically on the most, uh, the poorest territories. And from him, you will get a specialist consultation, a uh, echocardiogram, a radiogram, a radiograph, or a CT, whatever kind of that you need. And from him also, you will have emergency uh, care, you will have uh, emergency care, not, but high emergency care, they also can, if, if they have an emergency at their, at their their clinic, they will find a way, uh, they will find a hospital that to take care of this immediately. And also if you have surgery or complex care or chemotherapy, you always go through them. So they exterminated basically the system of favoritism based on uh, relationships and so on. And also it was a very corrupt system, of course, because you have to pay, you have to you know, go through uh, all kinds of uh, retribution systems to get some kind of care. And this is amazingly working very well. And it's it decreased the, the, the weight for procedures, decreased the, the size of the lines, increased satisfaction, um, increased results for, in terms of mortality, of uh, effectiveness of this. And so we're starting to measure this. And it is amazingly working very well. And, and what is different from the rest of the country, there are also what they call centrals for uh, for emergency care, for, no, sorry, for um, urgent care regulations. But in Rio de Janeiro, the regulation is based on the on the need of the medical of the family health office. This is the main difference. Mm -hmm. He identifies the needs and he provides. This regulation, he, he's, sent, he's a center of the regulation, center, the central point of the regulation. This is very interesting and yeah. it's working well. It's very interesting. I didn't know about it. That's very interesting. Yeah. Good. Uh, I think she has a question. I think, oh, yeah, she had a question and then, yeah, and then we have another one here. So, Monserrat Soler is partly Brazilian. No, I, I'm, no? I'm Mexican, but I Mexican. lived in Brazil but for a while. I've done research there for many All years. Right. 
Para en Bahía. En no, Bahía. Bahía. <laughs> so, alegría. Everybody <laughs> likes Bahía. Everybody likes Bahía and Rio. So, Nobody likes San Paolo. Nobody likes San Paolo. No. But, um, uh, so, my question, I guess, is given um, sort of the... Oh, he's listening. No. Oh, sort of the... When I've gone in the last few years, I've noticed uh, a lot more rates of obesity and diabetes and, and sort of all these chronic illnesses. And I guess my question is if the SUS is sort of prepared or has the flexibility, the adaptability to, to deal with that sort of long into the future. And as a sort of semi-related question, which is different, is um, related to mental illness. I'm just not sure if the SUS sort of covers that in the same way, like as well as it does other parts of health. So. This is a good question. Um, in the last, uh, I would say, 15 years, the ascension of class of the low the low classes, give, given uh, due to income transfer programs from the Workers' Party government, which is now being ousted, ousted from yeah. the country by this impeachment process, which is which is something. We're living in a completely crazy crack crime. It's really maddening. Really very, very uh, bad times here. Uh, so what we used to we used to think that those twelve years of left wing supposedly left wing government would decrease inequality. It really didn't. Yeah. It took out a significant portion of the population out of absolute misery, yes, and gave them some buying power. This is the main difference, because of the, it was basically income transfers. There's, there was no accompanying policy, policies of health, education, uh, employment, um, sanitation, uh, housing. So their situation what, what can really improve uh, inequality is those, are those policies. We gave them a little bit of money in their hands. So what they did, they started buying uh, industrialized food and televisions. So they are fat now. They are, <laughs> so the amount of uh, was uh, incredible. We had a 50% decrease in, in, um, in uh, tobacco smoking in 20 years, and I don't know what fold increase, I think it's a 40% increase in obesity in the last 15 years. Very, very high, very quick. Yeah. And usually the poorest population. Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, uh, I, was, uh, I had a personal experience with that. <laughs> Because, no, I didn't get fat. That's what I, I'm sorry. That's what I said. I had a question. I, I, I can see I'm not a beach person. As you can see by my skin. But I went to the beach after a few years. Uh, three years ago, I went to the beach on a place. which It's, it's, a, it's a bus, a bus end, uh, end stop. Which brings people from the, uh, the poor areas of Rio to the beach. So I went there to meet friends. And it's basically a poor and black population. Poverty in Brazil is very colored. It's black, mostly, and especially in big cities. It's a lot of, ra of social racism in Brazil also. Um, this, this vision of the, of the beach, of the poor, was absolutely astounding for me. Because I saw obesity there. Was, uh, most of the kids were around, was, were really obese, the kids. And I'm looking at the kids. And I was astonished. You can, you can see the statistics there, you know, going to a sea bath. It was amazing. So uh, the Swiss is, of course, getting a strain from this, as everywhere in the world. Right. This is uh, it's a phenomenon happening. In, in all countries, especially... We, we call this obesity. in global health, globesity. <laughs> globesity, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Nice thing. Of course, I think this will start decreasing in, in countries like the Indo rich countries. It's already decreasing. At least the acceleration is slowing in countries Europe. like Europe, and it's slowing already in the States, yes. from something I read. Mm -hmm. 
and it will take you know, all the time to decrease acceleration in the country, I think, because there's a lot of uh, desire to uh, cons for consumption. People will lose their, probably they will go now back to the previous uh, consumption situation because of the economic, strong, severe economic crisis. When they will get better again, they will be crazy to start buying again. And there's much uh, submitted to TV advertising and, and very, there's very, very low conscious. It's an uneducated country. So there's very low conscious about consciousness about critical cons food consumption in Brazil. It's completely acritical. So we want to buy, they want to buy cookies, they want to buy, uh, you know, those snacks, you know, salty snacks. This is what people, uh, it's, uh, ice creams and so on. So it will take a long time for our obesity curve to start pointing down again. So this is the main problem. And the Swiss is dealing with that. Chronic disease is difficult to, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to deal with on the health system. I think the best place to do that is, of course, in the family health program. In fact, uh, the family health program is, 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 is getting too much weight, too much responsibility, because every single disease is best taken care of your home. But if you get obesity, it's best to take care of your home. Terminal care, also it needs to be at home, and uh, palliative care, and Zika, and yeah. newborns with microcephaly, whatever you think it's better to be taken care of in your home. So the family health program is it's getting a lot of weight on, the, on its shoulders, and not as much as investment as it's getting weight. So it's getting, it's getting a lot of strain, and it's getting very stressful for uh, health family, family health doctors and workers, uh, nurses, psychologists, and community health agents, they're getting a lot of strain because they're getting more and more tasks and not more people and not more money and not more resources to work. Good. So I think uh, uh, we're almost out of time. So I think we can uh, can also maybe some, if you guys have more questions, you can write to me the questions and I can forward to Dr. Daniel. We can give you guys some feedback on other questions that you guys have. You guys have. Unfortunately, we have. We don't have uh, a lot of time. But this was was really, really, really helpful. I I am very pleased with all this. I learned a lot today. It's good. It's always good to learn a lot about your own country, and it's always good to talk to someone that has so much knowledge and. And it, I, 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 it's not, it's not uh, it's just a compliment, but the way you put things, it's, it's even sometimes, you, you know, some things you said, and it's so clear to understand the pictures that I used to see when I was practicing there. So it was really very helpful. For, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Becker. It was a pleasure to have you here. You should just know, next week I will be in Shanghai and we'll be talking with our Chinese colleagues. I hope they speak as frankly as you do. <laughs> sure that they will. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. And we'll, we'll, we will be in touch with we'll you. We'll be in touch. We'll, we'll give it. Thank you very much. You've helped to modernize and globalize our education. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bonne nuit. 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 Bonne